Hello everyone, this is Robin Poe and I would like to invite you to join myself, Nathan Oakley, Antonio Subirats, David Weiss, and many, many other Flat Earthers for an amazing 24-hour sun tracking event on July 3rd. This whole idea got started when we were finishing up a Mechanics of the Fourth Wall hangout and we all went over to a Skype call, uh, myself, Antonio Subirats, Patricia Steer, David Weiss, and we were all on a Skype call and and then all of a sudden Nathan Oakley says, oh, the sun is just coming up. And I go, well, that's really strange because here in Seattle, it's just going down or it's starting to go down. Then after that, we started discussing about how that would work because it didn't seem like it should work because see, Seattle is so far around the globe from England and even in the summertime on the summer solstice there's still too much of the earth that it, the sun would have to get around so we started talking saying you know this is something that would be an interesting experiment to do is having people report the sunrise or sunset record sunrise and sunset at their location and come on the hangout and do the recording and show the sunrise and sunset going up and or suns rising or setting in real time. But and we could do this over a 24 hour period and everybody who reports something, we would learn something new, just like we learned something new when uh, me and Nathan started comparing the sunset in Seattle to the sunrise in Warwickshire, England. I plotted out my position and the direction of the sunset on a Gleason standard map. So from Seattle at the angle of about 30 degrees, that put the sun at the Tropic of Cancer somewhere in the South China Sea, roughly around Thailand. So anyway, after I looked at that, I, I compared that to the distance from the sun to Warwickshire, England, and it turns out that the sun was equidistant from Warwickshire, England, and from Seattle to the sun, and from Warwickshire, England to the sun, it was equidistant. And so, therefore, it shows that on a flat Earth, that once you reach a certain distance from the sun, about 7,500 miles, the sun will appear to go over the horizon. Okay, I decided to go out and buy a globe. Just because I, I, not because I'm fond of the globe, but because I decided to show what a nonsense the globe is. So here I am in Seattle. I can get the, I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see. And then I'm going to turn the globe away from Seattle at its 23 degree angle until we get to the south. China Sea. And so as you can see, the South China Sea is facing at a 23 degree angle. And where's my finger? Seattle is already be behind the horizon. Oops. As you can see. Seattle is already behind the horizon from the South China Sea when the South China Sea is facing towards the camera. And then if we look at where the Terminator line is on the other side, about right here, I'll even give it a little extra just to give people the benefit of the doubt. So we're sitting on the Terminator line and that Terminator line is right in the center of the Black Sea. So just above the Black Sea. Now, let me turn the globe around. Okay, we're on the Black Sea, right there. Now, if I point to England, Warwickshire, England, you can see that's how much distance you have from where the Terminator line is. So there's quite a bit of distance before the sun should be coming up in Warwickshire, England as well. So between that, just that one comparison between me and Nathan Oakland, between my sunset in Seattle and his sunrise in Warwickshire, England, we were able to determine a whole lot about how the flat earth works and how the globe does not work. 
So if you're interested in joining in and helping out with us on this great 24-hour uh, sun tracking event on July 3rd, please email Nathan Oakley 1980 at AOL.com and I'll put his email in the comments section and join us for this epic epic 24-hour sun tracking event July 3rd. We'll see you there.